All right, now that we have removed the radio from the enclosure, we are going to get started on doing the wire extensions and everything needed to make sure everything's sealed up away from water and it can resist corrosion that much better. If any of y'all are wanting, this is a Pyle PLRMR 23BTW model paired with Pyle Hydra six and a half inch speakers on the enclosure box. So as I said, what we're doing is extending these wires. I went ahead and labeled them one through four. Each number is gonna help me track back to what speaker wire that correlates to them. So I labeled them all. I put um, little connector butt butts here and I'm using insulated heat tape on each connection and then I've extended the number here too. So two, two, and then I'm prepping to then wire it in to the speaker itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply heat to each spot for the heat tape and that will create a seal. All right, I've now heated up all the shrink tape on the connection so they're sealed. But I wanted to notate, I made this mistake because I didn't read the diagram at first. Um, you're going to want to run your constant and your switch for this. It's called yellow B and then a set, uh, accessory or ACC. Um, so basically when you switch on the radio, one power light is for like an internal battery. And then the other power wire is for your constant power. Um, I'm going to actually cap and put connectors and shrink tape on this also, and then just have a connector on the power side over there. I just wanted to hop back on this little video and let you know that tip. When I return, we will be putting it into the enclosure and I'll show you the wiring on that side of it too. And my third and final tip is say you have all these wires, right? These are for different applications within the wiring diagram. Um, what I like to do, let me find a piece small enough, is like take a piece of your heat tubing and slide it over all of these. Um, I can't really do it with one hand, but I will show you in a second um, after it's done. Here's what I was talking about. So basically I just heated the tube up and then I pinched the tip while it was pretty hot. Um, so now that's closed off. You won't have to worry about it and it won't get in the way as much. Um, but what we're gonna do now is put it back into the enclosure and wire the speakers to the radio and the power to the radio. And then I'm gonna go over how I wired it and include pictures within the video of my diagram. And I will also give you a little information on how resistance, the length of your wire, amps and voltage all play into creating a safe environment to run this and why you need to know that. All right, we got the stereo put back into the enclosure. All the wires have been ran, heat shrinked on the connecting side to the radio itself, and then to the connection to the speakers are ready to go. The connector butts are on there. The heat shrink is on there, and we're gonna get started to wire it up. After that, we'll be doing our ground and finishing our power side, which I put a connector butt here. And then all that's left really is to take your power to your connector here. That is your acceler um, accessory and constant power. And we will go into greater detail in a moment. Now this can seem overwhelming to wire things like this, but it's just a comp you're completing a circuit. You have power, you have fuses, and that's gonna be your safety for amperage and your controls and then whatever accessories you're running right the main things you got to think about is voltage amp resistance and it kind of all goes in the realms of ohm's law first thing you want to do is you want to have a good ground so i have eight gauge uh commercial grade so I have that washered off with a copper connection. 
heat tube runs here to my, this is called a bus. So basically it's a meeting place. You can have a positive bus, a negative bus. Um, it's basically, it applies negative, uh, let's say electricity or energy to the bar, which is all connected. And then what you can do is just run it right here, right? So if not, you would have to like multiple, multiple connections on your, your, your ground here. So again, negative to here to the bus bar. Now we're going to go a little bit of positive side. You have your positive side. Now, since I'm only running a control panel and I'm only running a radio and maybe a bilge pump, that's not really going to pull much. And think again, distance. I'm not going far, so I don't got to worry about resistance or over amping or anything like that. So again, positive wire to a safety switch, right? So right now I have it on. So my power's on. If I turn it off, power's off and so on and so forth. What's great about that too, is I can close these batteries. I'm going to put another one on this side off and these are individually dedicated. When I charge my batteries, I can not even worry about anything because it stops there, right? So there's nothing stops here and negative. You don't need to worry about it's earth. It's ground. So let me continue. I know I may be going in too much detail, but I did not talk much in the other video. Um, so power is from your battery to your switch. And now that power goes to here, the end of this five gang switch panel. Now I've sealed and use a connector, butt, heat shrink connector, butt also that's my power side. Now, since this is ran in series, your power is applied throughout, right? And the next thing that this is gonna go across is, right? So now we have power applied here. My switches are now powered. So on this first switch, which has power, you connect your power, which if you look down here, the yellow and red are on one um, end connector, heat shrink. And so now we have power to our radio, but we can't do anything unless we have a ground, right? So then we'll go back. The switch panel is grounded. This is grounded. Okay, so where's our ground to that? On our bus bar. So then our ground from here goes to our radio. So we have ground and we have power. So that now allows you to use your radio. And radios don't pull much. I mean, they pretty much come stock with like 18 gauge wires for most of it, 16, maybe 14 gauge for your power and ground. But I'm running 14, so I'm right in line with what's okay. And the great thing about this switch panel, which all don't have this, inline fuses, 20 amp fuses on each one of these. So I'm way above where I need to be, um, but still in line with most common accessories. Uh, so yeah, that is the system. Again, power from your battery to your switch, the power line runs, goes into the end of the switch panel, and then your ground goes into here. And this is all in line, so now you're all grounded and you're all safe on that side, and then everything's fused. So then you take your power from your switch to your component and your ground to your bus bar. This is the one thing you'll need. This has its own individual dedicated switch, right? This allows you to dedicate your grounds all to these terminals. Imagine these switches. I'm just saying that like as in terms of how you have a multitude of switches here. This is your connecting point here. That's why it's great to have a bus bar. So that in completion is the system that I ran. I drew a schematic. I will put it up on the camera or the video rather. It looks like a five-year-old drew it. And I drew a legend in the top left. And I really hope that this video will help you get where you need to be, you know? It's nice being able to do this, wire this up, build your own custom box instead of spending thousands of dollars to have someone do it. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope you have a blessed day. There may be a part three at some point, but that's just going to be on this other side. Um, and it's going to run up to my front to Fish Finders and Trolling Motor. And uh, well, I hope you all have a blessed weekend.